Okay, this is my first game as the Jihadist. This should prove interesting. Welcome to Legendary Tactics. Labyrinth. War on Terror. This is the Early Access Edition. Okay, I'm <clears throat> the Jihadist player. I don't play this the Jihadist uh, very often. I always end up being the uh, Americans, so this will be uh, good for me. Uh, I'm sure that the AI is going to be a good challenge. First hand, I've got a lot of my own events, which is good. Um, just while my funding is uh, is high, I want to make sure I'm getting as many guys on the uh, on the board as possible. That's a very good one, just in case he gets lucky with a roll. Um, that one's an automatic recruit to those countries, which is uh, pretty good. Might be good to get a sell in Pakistan early. Um, and that gives me a sell in Iraq or Iran. So. Yeah, it's basically the the main thing to keep in mind with the jihadists is their flexibility. Um, they have um, a lot more flexibility than the Americans. I made them discard one of my events, <laughs> and I got a sell in Pakistan, which is great. Um, but the uh, the main thing is the flexibility, and we'll do this as well, just to guarantee we get a couple cells in India. He's going to be under some pressure here. Oh, he managed to get Pakistan to fair, which is a really the only opening move for the American player in uh, Let's Roll scenario. And now that he's there, he's going to send some guys back to the track. That's an interesting choice, but perhaps lining up for a, uh, a regime change in Afghanistan. So while we are in Pakistan, um, you know, usually, if you're trying to worsen the governance of a, of a country, you have a choice between plotting, which can be blocked, or um, doing a minor jihad, which can't be blocked, but can lose you cells in the, uh, in the meantime. So you got to try and manage your, your resources and uh, do the best with what you can. There's obviously a lot of luck on the jihadi side. Um, you got to roll well in order to be successful. In, in general, now we've uh, just recruiting in, in a <clears throat> in an Islamist rule country. That's a guaranteed thing, so you don't have to um, worry about uh, rolling for that. But normally, you do have to roll um, anytime you're trying to get uh, cells to travel any distance, or you're um, looking to add cells to a country which is not at Islamist rule. It's or in, in regime change, you need to. Uh, Get lucky, and uh, <clears throat> so he's targeting uh, the cell in India. So he wants to get rid of that, which is fine. And he uh, also um, revealed my cell in Pakistan. So Fat was an interesting card because you switch car random cards with the other player, which can be good. Um, can be bad. Sometimes you want to actually um, keep the opponent's events in hand because that way you can control if and how they come out. So it's uh, it's it's not always a bad thing when you get a, a mitt full of the other guy's events because you can likely mitigate a lot of them or at least uh, time them so that you can play them at a moment when it's not as advantageous. So I think we're gonna travel, see how, see how far we can get with. Uh, if we can shift uh, Pakistan to Islamist rule, obviously we are going to really put the pressure on, <coughs> because uh, you can't lose Pakistan as the Americans. It's just not, not a, not an option. No, we got a plot, so that'll help. Um, may as well this late in the turn might as well go for the plot three which is the big one out of the six that you're given um, looks like he's gonna put it one op into reserves and then likely oh he's gonna disrupt oh, I thought he was gonna block the the uh, plot but seems more interested in sending a cell home so 
we rolled and missed with all of them if you can believe it so it's pretty brutal I think what we might do here is there's a lot of cards which allow you to play cells which you know can be great but the only downside is you end up sometimes scattering your efforts where you're you're not really where you you know you've got two cells here and two cells here you know it's uh, you know it kind of scatters your efforts but I don't mind going to Indonesia and to Central Asia because those are close enough to the the main event which in this scenario which basically revolves around uh, Gulf states and Pakistan and those surrounding states. There's not really a lot of stuff typically that happens outside of that. Um, in this scenario, you don't really have to deal with Africa very much. He's going to play the... No, he's going to play Tony Blair and he's going to make some attempts to improve his prestige. Um, got the world more or less on his side here so well it's this late in the turn so if his three ops are gone we're hoping to get a plot and we did which is great um, again this late in the turn you may as well just play the plot too and hope for the best it gives us two rolls he's unable to block it so we got one hit which reduces the uh, governance down to poor and uh, that leaves us in pretty good stead. He, the risk is always that uh, while he's an ally, uh, while Pakistan's an ally, that he, he can, um, you know, deploy troops there and disrupt you out. I like Hambali, um, you know, especially uh, the fact that the U.S. cannot play Hambali against me. That's always a good thing. Oil price spike is gr is a great card, but it's a little bit early for it to really have a lot of uh, you know impact. The door to uh, it jihad was closed. We can use that one late in the turn, so it won't have much of an impact. Um, so yeah, we got a, a fair number of his events, um, which is fine. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you look at door to it jihad and uh, intel community. Those ones can be played later on in the turn. Predator's never good, um, no matter when it's played, but it's manageable. And enhanced measures may not uh, have much of an effect. So I'm just scanning to see if there's any decent cards to revive with uh, the oil sp uh, price spike, but really, maybe clean operatives, but not, uh, not really a ton. <coughs> so... And a card like Enhanced Measures, you can play that early on, and you know, in the turn if Disrupt is not possible, um, then it's not really um, as dangerous an event as it could be. Okay, that gets us basically all on the board, so we don't have to worry about the funding at the moment. Um, now, the only thing is, he will be able to take a random card from my hand, um, so this that could be dangerous. But let's get. Uh, Let's get uh, some guys into Pakistan, see if we can get it flipped so we can get a hold of that Pakistani arsenal. <clears throat> Again, there's a lot of luck on the jihadists' uh, end. Alright, he disrupted and took Predator from us, so <laughs> that one was going to trigger no matter what. <clears throat> so he's whittled us down there getting a bit nervous I think about uh, about um, Pakistan I don't blame him clean operatives is great especially if you have WMDs but since he has that uh, enhanced measures we can use the leak event against him so we'll do that and that'll force him to roll prestige now he actually went up in prestige and his posture stayed the same so that didn't really help but we can shift Pakistan or Gulf states to neutral say we'll do that with Pakistan um, he's gonna try to he's gonna use his reserves to uh, roll Pakistan and he's gonna disrupt again in Pakistan so yeah we're uh, 
Definitely taking his focus, but we got to get some guys back on the board here. That's gonna, I think that card needs to be played towards the end. <clears throat> Same with the door. Do it Jihad was closed. The later we play that, the better. So, um, yeah, let's hit him with this event. It's gonna hurt his prestige. He has to lose a card, which is fine. And I think saving those high ops cards for later is always a good idea as well, generally, but. Well, let's get some guys on the board before our funding is cut. <clears throat> and then we'll deal with the card effect. <coughs> and War of Ideas, man, his hand would be hard to manage if he was the if he was a player. <laughs> man. He's got a lot of our events, but they don't trigger because he's uh he's a bot and he just improved Pakistan a bunch so we're gonna just uh, use this here to recruit and bring someone <clears throat> into Afghanistan that's really our base of operations at the moment um, we can keep bringing in cells the only thing we have to worry about is the funding but it's automatic recruit so yeah, so we'll let him have his uh, his event. He can inspect our hand of one card and uh, conduct a one value operation. And we're gonna do some plotting. And again, late in the turn, it's going to, uh, oh, we missed with both. Late in the turn though, usually his three ops are whittled down. He doesn't have a lot of them, so oh, he's gonna disrupt and uh, get rid of our cadre in, uh, in India. <coughs> and we will play the event, and that'll give us a plot in Indonesia. And uh, we'll hope that he doesn't have a three-banger to take care of it, and he will use his reserves, I think. Oh, no, he couldn't. So uh, we... Hit in Indonesia, hurt his funding, boosted our, uh, hurt his prestige, built our funding up, and now we're at the end of uh, end of the turn. All right, so begins the next turn. All right, well. Overall, I think I'm doing okay. He's been battling back. It's been a bit of back and forth. That one's a good one to maybe hurt his prestige. Um, that is great. If we can play that, hurt his prestige, and can you get that down to prestige two or something along those lines? And that one's also a good one to... Uh, hit him with. So there's some really good cards um, and his events are pretty innocuous. Biometrics is the only one that I'd maybe even begin to care about. The other ones are fine. <clears throat> so I can kind of see, a lot of times you can see a, kind of the string of things that you'd, you know, you'd like to, uh, string of events that will go together. Uh, that's one of them. So now his prestige is in the tank. That's going to really hurt his war of ideas. And then when you follow that up with uh, <clears throat> Musharraf, um, that is a pretty, um, pretty good turn right there. So he's gonna do some disrupting, and oh, we got the election. That'd be great if oh the Republicans won, so that uh, helped his prestige a little bit, and uh, he was able to disrupt me out of Indonesia. So far, I'm not blown away by the AI on the American side. It doesn't seem to be really that, um, you know, that powerful. Uh, it seems to do a, a lot of uh, disruptions uh, by the country, which is uh, doesn't gain him any prestige and it doesn't um, really help him. I mean, he's he's done okay in sort of holding the line, but I'm totally, I'm not really blown away with the uh, results thus far. So we'll do hit him with a martyrdom operation, and then let's see if we can uh, 
Maybe we should just add some new recruits, build them up in uh, Afghanistan again. <coughs> if I were him, I would really want to do a regime change in Afghanistan if the circumstances were favorable because, you know, especially with my funding where it is, it's going to be very, uh, very tough for him to... Um, hold me back from replacing everything that he wipes out so <clears throat> and uh, anyway we got Asia Central Asia's governance to poor which was to be expected um, boosted our funding a little bit which is good I'd like to maximize that event later if I could after uh, it's been disrupted after we've got more cells in the track. <coughs> um, let this event happen. Uh, there's, well, yeah, I guess we can put in first plot. Just doesn't really matter that much. These events are so innocuous, it's not really an issue. But I do, if he does come up with some magical prestige boost, I want to play Axis of Evil and at least have a chance of knocking him back a peg. So let's move these guys to uh, Pakistan. Just figuring out the UI here. <clears throat> So three from pa Afghanistan into Pakistan. <clears throat> and more of ideas in Gulf states. And that's good for him. <clears throat> he wants, yeah, he gets Gulf states to good. That is exactly what he needs to do. The Gulf states is the rock of American strategy and let's roll scenario and really in Labyrinth overall. Um, it's a really great state because there's not a, no events that affect it really directly. Um, but man, <clears throat> it can be a very useful anchor. And we're going to make this a major jihad. We're going to go for gold. took me a little while to figure out this interface so you choose jihad you select your your cells there and then you got to click on the minor part and it will turn to major and got it got it to Islamist rule the WMDs are mine so that does change the equation a bit now a card like clean operatives and uh, combined with a martyrdom operation that can be a game winner so um, he's going to go into do a regime change in Iraq. He gets a bit of a prestige boost there. Um, interesting choice, though. I would have maybe wanted to choose uh, Pakistan, but maybe he has a different event that he's looking to capitalize on. Um, it's tough to tell with an AI because sometimes they do weird stuff. My funding dipped a little bit below where I'd like it to be, but that's okay. Um, the KSM card in this case is very useful. Um, <coughs> I can just place a plot um, in any non-Islamist rule country, which is very handy. Um, again, I mean, the Patriot Act, I guess, is potentially uh, an issue. Should make sure to play, play sanctions before the Patriot Act or just do plotting with the Patriot Act and take that. It's probably the best move there. Um, so we're going to travel, see if we can disrupt that Gulf States, because we definitely want to take that off the board for him. Yeah, some interesting events, Kazakh strain could be very useful. Um, yeah, let's get rid of this though. Do it as a first plot. <clears throat> get some funding. Maybe we can hurt his uh, status there. No, messed with all of them. 
but it uh, means that the um, we don't have to worry about the Patriot Act. And as it turned out, he had let's roll anyway. So, oh, enhanced measures. It's interesting. He brought that back. It's an interesting choice because I blocked it with leak. But um, again, the, I'm not totally sold on the uh, AI for the Americans. I found that the um, jihadi AI was much gave much more of a challenge. Still no luck with uh, plotting in uh, Gulf states, but I'd like to knock it back if we could. Oh, and he's going to disrupt. Interestingly, in Gulf states, this is what I mean. He's using a three up card to disrupt in a one up uh, in a in a good governance country. It seems a bit odd to me, but uh, anyway, he did protect the um, the Gulf states, which which is which is uh, what his goal was. Um, KSM could just throw a plot in there that he'd have to deal with, which you know might be interesting. Um, yeah, I'm a bit uh, torn here because I can't recruit those guys right now. <clears throat> no, Moro Tox is going to have to be played for sure. Not that Abu Sayyaf is a you know, crazy good event, but it's, you know, it does give another um, opportunity right near the U.S. to recruit. So it's uh, can be pretty good, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Keep working and keep hammering in the Gulf states. Um, we really only need to get uh, Indonesia flipped and then we're in good shape. He's already tied tied up in a, in a, uh, Iran, or sorry, in Iraq, sorry. So, now he alerted our plot. That was uh, perhaps predictable. Hmm. And again, puzzling move. He could have used backlash there to reduce my funding to one, but again, maybe he's just protecting, uh, you know, that that uh, area. So, we'll just keep plotting. Make sure we've got uh, not exposing more cells than we need to. Oh, we got one. That's good. Again, we're late enough in the turn that uh, maybe he doesn't have a three op card to uh, prevent that. So we're going to use our best plot uh, for that one and uh, number two for that one. Why not? And um, well, this one, the event's going to have to trigger, but we'll use it for travel for now. And hopefully that plot holds in Gulf states, because if we can hurt the uh, governance there, that's uh, a big plus. And with his guys tied up in Iraq right now, he's not far from getting them out, but, <clears throat> you know, I think uh, having a cell there to just kind of potentially disrupt things could be uh, really good. And he's going to alert the plot. Yeah, figured as much. Yeah, and wherever ideas in Iraq, just missed that one. <clears throat> so we have to let that event happen. <clears throat> but uh, that's all right. <clears throat> we're uh, we're working the big plan here. Oh, and they blocked the plot. All right. So missed that roll, which is good. So we look at the next hand up here. And we're still in pretty good shape. We've got a couple of uh, nations set to uh, Islamist rule here. That would be a good thing to have. I think uh, that might be worth doing. It's a, a permanent cell in Iraq that they can't disrupt. That will help. And because we have that extra cell there, he can't uh, do. Um, 
he can't uh, end the regime change because he doesn't uh, have enough troops there. So he's going to have to disrupt that one cell. That's going to be a pain in the butt <clears throat> for him to do. Um, and uh, unless he adds more troops. Now the question is, which event of his do I allow to happen? Don't think I can let Quartet happen. It's just too big a boost in prestige and too hard to hit in funding. So <clears throat> let's plot in Iraq. And we got one, which is great. And uh, I don't want to waste my WMDs at, the, at this stage. So we'll just... Uh, another plot three's great out there. So <clears throat> we'll throw in a plot two and just hope to uh, hurt the... Uh, oh. There we go. Regime change. <clears throat> oh wow, big prestige hit. That is very helpful. <clears throat> if that had gone the other way, that might have been a very different um, different game. So now his troops are in overstretch. He's going to be really pinned down if we can if we can work this right. Um, so he's lets the plot go off, which cancels out his disrupt. <clears throat> so now that is very good. Now it means um, we really have to watch our ops carefully here, but um, we're going to have to find another target to convert to um, Islamic rule here. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering maybe Central Asia and Indonesia might be a good uh, potential option. So, um, yeah, and the reason for that basically is that, um, you know, the, his, he's got 12, 12 troops pinned down, only um, a handful of them free. Uh, he's only got the two in Saudi Arabia and the one left on the track, which uh, you can't disrupt without at least two troops deployed. So really, he's only got that force in Saudi Arabia that has any flexibility at all. So... We're going to get some guys in there and uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, ah, yeah, that's a tough one. Now we're going to have to let that event happen at some point, <clears throat> but let's just plot um, in Afghanistan and or sorry, in Pakistan, we got a plot in there, so let's drop them in. <coughs> and just, uh, main thing is to get our funding up, so even if we can just get up one funding, um, that'll help us. No, and, but it'll just help us to uh, now get some recruiting going, that's perfect. <coughs> Let's do that and get some guys in there. <clears throat> now the interesting thing is, where do we want them? Um, I think we'll put a couple in Iraq, a couple in, uh, in um, Pakistan, because I really don't want him to be able to get uh, get uh, end the regime change in uh, Iraq. i got to pin him down there, so give him a couple cells to get rid of. Let's do some plotting. Ah, missed. And it's Turkey's fair ally, that's fine. With his prestige where it's at, he's not going to be doing anything with that. He's, yeah, war of ideas at this stage, unless they're in, uh, unless they're in non-Islamic um, countries, they're not really going to be that useful. And we'll plot again, try and knock the Gulf states off. It's perch. Let's see if we can get a plot in Iraq. Oh, two of them. That is perfect. Even if they're not. Well, they're both twos. That's pretty good. That's going to mean he's going to have a tough go if he can't block that. <clears throat> oh, he's going to alert one of them. Now, does he have another three? Three banger, he does. Well, he's burning through a lot of ops though to, to stop that from happening. 
So our funding dropped just below the line. It would have been great to have a couple of cards extra on him. We've got Martyrdom Operation. That's going to be powerful. Foreign Fighters. It's going to be a great uh, tool to get um, uh, some cells there in uh, either of the regime change countries. Um, detainee release could also help out as well, depending on what he does. And Iran is always, uh, you know, always a, a help. <laughs> you can just play the event and just roll whether you've got the um, the, the cells there or not. So I always have to check the log. I rolled two and four, so I just missed that in Gulf States. Now, as I'm looking at this uh, game in replay here, as I am, um, really, I, sh I just feel I should be, now that with all those troops pinned down in those regime change countries, I think it would be great to just <clears throat> send more cells to Central Asia and to Indonesia and just um, flip those to Islamist rule. I mean, that's, that's going to get me to... Uh, you know where I need to be faster so we'll do the uh, martyrdom operation in uh, in Iraq we'll hit him with everything we got <clears throat> gotta get that governance down he's gonna alert once and no he can't oh but we missed the roll Missed the rules on that one, so unfortunately. But now we have five cells, so that worked out well. So uh, we can use foreign fighters for the event. Now the question is, which regime country do we do we hit? If we put them all in, uh, yeah, I'll just throw them all in Iraq. Yeah, I don't like <clears throat> that card because that allows Turkey to go good. It's definitely not something we want, so we'll do that as a first plot. And uh, we'll plot away in Iraq big time. And try and break the, the cycle there. He's already had to block two plots. He's got another two plots to deal with, even if they're going to be weak. He's got one in reserves, and let's see if he uses another card as uh, oh, he's going to play the event. Interesting. So we got, uh, got that plot off. We got full funding. Um, Iraq is down to poor governance, which is where we where we want it. Um, it makes it harder for him to. Uh, and with all those cells there, he's going to have a lot of cleaning up to do before he can get any uh, get the, get that regime change done in both places. Now the problem is I've only got five cells outside of those spots that uh, we can use to flip uh, any other countries with a major jihad. But again, as long as he's bogged down, the thing with um, regime changes they're easy to uh, get into but they're hard to get out of and that's what the designer uh, baked into uh, Labyrinth Global War on Terror so I think um, yeah we're gonna start moving uh, moving things a bit towards um, Central Asia let's get this let's get this things moving so we can uh, <coughs> With full funding and all that, there's really not much more we need to worry about. Just uh... <coughs> get uh, enough guys to the uh, spot where we want to go for the major jihad. And uh... oh. oh, interesting. He pulled it from. See, so again, the AI, I don't know. That was a mysterious move. I mean, with Central Asia ready to pop. Um, and he instead goes for Iraq. That uh, doesn't seem to be a smart move uh, because if this goes bad, then 
All we need is a, a roll, a good roll or two. And we missed it. <laughs> but we did get the besieged regime, and the fact that it's an ally is not really a concern for us. Um, because, um, yeah, we may as well just, I think we should just recruit and get some more guys there. But the fact that it's a besieged regime, I don't know why we can't re recruit in uh, Afghanistan. Oh, there's no cells there, that's why. Um, still need someone to do the recruiting. Um, anyway, yeah, so the, <clears throat> I think the, um, no, maybe we'll just try for it in Central Asia, see if we get there. And one and two. Well, that shortcutted things. So he's going to improve the governance level in Pakistan. And now we have nine cards over his seven. So this is good. Makes it especially more powerful when uh, we have cards that, for example, um, get them to randomly discard cards. That's going to be a powerful, powerful card. He's only going to have five cards to work with this turn. Um, that is going to be really, really tough. So let's hit him with that right off the bat. He's going to lose. Well, yeah, that Prowl Predator could be tough for us. All right. And uh, we may as well. That one is uh, a mood event. So let's uh, go for another Jihad in, in uh, Central Asia with the, with the uh, Besieged Regime. All we need is one, and we got there. Cost us a couple cells, but... And he's desperately trying to disrupt us out of Pakistan so he can finish off this regime change. Um, but... Um, oh, all right, he gave himself a bit of a boost. His prestige is creeping up a little bit. Allows us to recruit in the U.S. Well, <clears throat> we have that way of uh, winning o open to us also with the WMDs in play. Um, he cannot leave cells in the U.S. at all. So, I don't know. We'll try this event and see how we do. At least... Uh, gives us another option. He is, uh, interestingly, he is going for get Pakistan free and clear. <clears throat> He's got a good opportunity to do that. So we need to get, I need to get a guy in Afghanistan who can do the recruiting and, uh, We'll take that event to get all the cells there. First, yeah. <coughs> so that restores our numbers. And yeah, I just, some of the moves that this AI makes, I'm really not sure about. I don't understand why that was so important, but it'd be better to do a war of ideas, in my opinion. But. I mean, it's a bit of a long shot because uh, trying to get to good is a negative one modifier. But with Gulf states next door, as, as a good governance country, he's got a plus one. So it's a 33% chance he's going to hit it. Um. <coughs> so we're going to... that there. I'm going to travel. Now my goal is actually just to pass through Afghan uh, Pakistan. I really need those cells in Indonesia. And uh, yeah, he's without cards. He only had five to play. <laughs> and that's uh, the risk that he ran. You know, with that, uh, you know, with his prestige pretty low. Yeah, I can use Schengen Visa to travel, uh, take the event, maybe just see if I can flip the the world over to uh, well, maybe that wasn't wor worth the risk. So we'll just move to Europe so we can have some other guys there ready to 
move into the US when we have a chance. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> well, we're we've got the card advantage again. Uh, Lebanon War, that would be helpful. Make him discard another card. So he's down to six cards again. Uh, let's roll. That's a good one to play before there's a, any plotting done. Wiretapping removes cells in uh, the US, Canada, and I believe uh, United Kingdom as well. So we don't want to play that event if we can help it. But that is another one we don't want to play either because that gets rid of our Anbar. Yeah, this is, um, yeah, I've got some events that are going to be tough to mitigate here. <clears throat> I think it's time to go for the win. Um, so we'll, we'll hit him with this event. It hits his prestige, makes him lose a card again, so he's down to six cards. And uh, we can place a, a cell. Um, well, I guess we've got nothing to place, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> And now it's time to see if we can push to the... we got to get to Indonesia here to finish this game. I mean, we also have the op option of, um, you know, the U.S. Um, getting a WMD in the U.S. But I think the, you know, that, that play only really works. It's pretty hard to pull off unless you um, have the martyrdom operation. It's really the only card that is going to be that powerful. Um, while we're passing through Pakistan, we'll just uh, hit them for, um, you know, a plot. See if we can knock Pakistan back down. Um, gonna take the event and he's gonna alert the plot. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the AI in this, it's nice to play against an AI sometimes, just if you don't have an opponent but uh, the American AI could use some work, in my opinion. It just does a few moves that, just seem, to me, seem wasted. I don't understand why um, why they would do what they do. Um, I mean, I guess maybe the, the last event did boost prestige, maybe, and that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, it's... It... Um, Now that those have <coughs> gone through, I'm not going to play Let's Roll. <laughs> um, yeah, I may have to give up that cell in the US, unfortunately. I don't think I can bury that card. I wanted to keep Anbar in place, so it was a tough call. I mean, uh, but really, the game is in my hands at this point, you know, unless. Um, unless he can miraculously get himself uh, out of uh, that mess in Pakistan, he's going to have to spend another two three-op cards to get rid of those plots. Um, so may as well just keep on moving through, and uh, I'm sure he'll be glad to see the back of me. But uh, get those guys moved to, uh, to Indonesia. And he lets the plots go off. Doesn't have the ops to block them. I think as well the AI might just be struggling because there really isn't a lot of good moves here for him. He's just got to just, you know, try and disrupt, try and um, hold hold me back. It's it's very tough when there's all these cells, you know, and you know both come both countries are at poor governance. It's going to be very tough to disrupt them completely out of there. Um, and then let's see if we can go for the game winner here. Um, go for the major jihad and... Ah, oh, just missed. But the besieged regime makes it uh, still within reach. Just need one more, one more hit. And uh, yeah, but when his prestige is this low, he's tied up in two foreign regime changes tons like uh, all of his troops basically committed um, he's had to discard cards every time you know he's working with 
you know, 50% less cards than, uh, or I guess 30, 33% less cards than I am. He's at six after the discard and I'm at nine. That's a, that's pretty tough. So I'm going to move this cell out of there just to try and save him because I, I want to keep him close. And it's a one-up card, so no huge loss there. But Oh, with biometrics. Well, that card many couldn't have. <laughs> he had only had a small chance of escaping. But uh, anyway, we'll, uh, let's see if we can recruit directly to um, Indonesia. No, actually, well, yeah, I don't know where. Let's recruit directly to Indonesia. That's what I think we should do. Just commit all three there. And oh, we got one, <laughs> one cell short. And uh, let's maybe try that again. And then that sets us up for the win on the next two, potentially next two cards if we get lucky. Oh, and we did. Perfect. All right. Now we're just one roll away from winning, and the U.S. player, if he was a live person, would probably be just begging for me to end <laughs> end this thing. Um, yeah, it's a handy event. You gotta say, you gotta remember, you never know. I've had some games where, um, you know, I have played and gotten miss miss after miss after miss after miss and it's really really frustrating so even though we're this close to a win you can't just completely uh, you know throw caution to the wind that's a darn good event <coughs> but stay focused Let's just go for the regime change, uh, for the, um, for, go for the win. If we miss, then we'll see what we'll take things from there. So this is, a, I think, the next best thing. We only need one hit. We can deal with the eight, what happens afterwards. And we got it. Game over. Victory. And, uh, yeah, as I said, the uh, American um, AI, I think, could use a little bit of work. There was a few moves there that were you know pretty ridiculous uh, but it is nice to play um, you know when you don't have uh, an opponent handy um, the AI uh, does give some challenge and I'm sure if you're a newer player to this game I've played many games of Labyrinth um, it would be very um, tricky in the early going to, to, to win for sure it's not an easy game at the best of times anyway this has been NATO potato from legendary tactics and uh, please like and subscribe Thank you for watching.